Muchas gracias, Marta. Agradecer también a la consejera su, sus palabras. Uh, ha sido muy emocionante estar en, en, en este equipo. Uh, thank you so much. Just before starting the conversation, just in English, to let you know for all of, the, uh, all of you that would like to listen in English, And, and or Spanish or French, the translation is just a small uh, like a sign, like a word, uh, like a little ball that it says interpretation. So there you can change the, the language. So now, thank you, Anita, so much for being with us today. Uh, you are an impressive leader who has said something. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> <laughs> you are more than welcome. Thank you for accepting. And you have set some records like. I think you're muted, Kea. I think you're muted. Uh, can Kaya? you? All right. Now we can. Tina? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. So my my question to you, Anita, was saying that you're an impressive leader. You have been on the top of 20 and top 50 of female leaders in Europe and, and Northern European countries. You have been the first director in HP Norway. Uh, and I was asking, do you think uh, that being a woman has been an obstacle to get your professional career goals? And also, do you think that being born in Norway has been an advantage uh, for you as a um, uh, women leader? So um, I think compared to many other countries, um, being born in Scandinavia, it's a positive thing when it comes to women pursuing careers. Nevertheless, I think we have to be quite honest and realistic because only 13% of the CEOs in Norway are women. Uh, we've come a long way when it comes to uh, female politicians. We've come a long way when it comes to paternity leave. Um, we come a long way when it comes to understanding and having a culture that men and women are, uh, can do whatever, it's not about gender. But still, a lot of women in Norway choose traditionally. So when I started to work in 1996, I started to work for IBM, an American company, and they were very focused from the very beginning to have 50% men and 50% women. So I was lucky starting in a company where I thought it's equal. But it was not equal because when I became a leader, I saw big differences between men and women when it comes to salary, when it comes to the ability to raise their hand and, and ask for positions. There's still um, a lot of differences bet between genders also in Norway. And what would be your advice to other women that want to pursue career goals? Uh, I was, I've never seen any research that says that a man can pursue anything a woman cannot. So whatever you want to pursue, um, don't stop even though you um, are getting obstacles. And specifically, if you have ambitions and you want to become a leader, I mean, you're choosing a path of obstacles and learning how to navigate, learning how to uh, make sure that you are environment, in environment with positive people or innovative people is really important because you're going to get so many no's. You're going to get so many people telling you it's not going to work. Uh, you're going to get so many people saying, well, how can you become a good mother if you do this? It's a bad choice. Uh, so I think preparing yourself for choosing a path that's going to give you some obstacles and then stick. Uh, to it. Don't give up. Thank you. And also that comes to my second question. Now in your role as a member of the European Innovation Council Advisory Board in the European Union, 
Um, which are the trends that you are seeing in Europe to foster innovation and entrepreneurship? And what is the council suggesting to, um, you know, get lower the gap between male and female in these areas? I think uh, all of us that are living in Europe, I think we're quite low now because Europe is actually the continent who has provided the most ambitious and innovative growth plan. And I'm talking about sustainable growth. EU's Green Deal, it's a must for everyone to go through because that is really uh, so much more than a document. This is going to affect every country, uh, every one of us. And it's going to make Europe lead again in the sixth innovation, uh, the wave of innovation. Uh, so I'm very positive towards what I see is happening in EU now. There's a lot of different countries who needs to really support EU because this is the time where we as a continent have to stick together. We, we have different problems in every country and the only way to solve it is to be strong and part of EU is my, uh, is my opinion. And at the European Innovation Council, you know, uh, in 2021, we're going to introduce uh, Horizon Europe. It's the biggest innovation platform in the world in, for innovation and research. And I've, I've been part of the KPI group for the innovation platform. And one of the three KPIs is about diversity and women. So we're doing whatever we can to promote female researchers, female entrepreneurs, and female investors. And also, uh, just a couple of months ago, one of our programs, we were asking for 25%. We set aside money for 25% for uh, women uh, applicants. And it actually, it resulted in 34%. So don't tell me that there's no women out there with ambitions enough. I mean, Europe is full of them and we would be crazy if we didn't capitalize on all the talents that we have in, in Europe. So I'd, I'm very positive towards the work that's being done now in EU. And I think um, females and women of, of EU and, and Europe, um, we're looking at hard years, but um, people are paving the path forward for us. And it's just go and, 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 and take it, just do it. Those are fantastic news. Um, it's amazing that you're introducing that KPA. That is fantastic. So from here to all the women that are I listening, know. exactly, go, go for it. <laughs> I would like also to make a, yeah. a question because we are, of course, speaking for entrepreneurs, but also for already established businesses looking into internationalization. You had a role as the CEO of Innovation Norway, the agency for internationalization of the Norwegian company. And uh, nowadays you are the chairman of the executive board at the Startup Norway. So what do you see that is the level of internationalization and entrepreneurship? There is a gender gap. And what would you highlight? Do you see like a difference and when um, business uh, led by women approach internationalization versus um, men? Yeah, so I cannot speak for um, all countries in the EU, but at least in Norway, only three out of 10 entrepreneurs are women. Only three out of 10 entrepreneurs. And if you look at the investor side, even fewer investors are uh, women. What women do is they start up uh, a company and maybe they uh, hire themselves and maybe one or two more. Women are not the ones who are building the growth companies. Um, and we see in Norway that after five years, only 19% of those companies who survive the first five years are run by women. And if we look at companies that has more than 10% growth annually, it's only 10% that are run by women. 10% of them are having professional investors as part of their companies. So there's a massive job to do in Norway to um, 
to create role models to, to make, create growth companies. There's a lot of smaller companies, but not growth companies. So what we've been doing also at Startup Norway is that we've started an initiative with somebody called uh, the Women Investor Network. Um, we are launching a program and it's aimed at women, educating women on how to become investors. Because, you know, if you look at who owns the world, it's mostly men. And if we're going to change the power of that, uh, women needs to not only become CEOs, but also if they don't want to be CEOs, they can be investors. And a lot of women don't have their own they can learn to start to invest with other money, other people's money. Uh, so we see that when women are on board as investors, they are promoting and look run entrepreneurs. So um, there's a lot of work to do when it comes to promoting women. And what research is saying is that we need uh, we need the role models and the good examples. And then you can think, oh, maybe I can do that. So I'm, I'm positive uh, for the next generation. Uh, I think it's still you and we should never take this as granted, not even in Scandinavia or Norway, because it's so fragile. It's only a couple of generations ago. Like my grandmother, she could not go to uh, high school. It you know, th this concept of women being equal is fragile. It's not. No, thank you so much, uh, Anita. I think we have learned a lot. Um, I agree with you that just remember me to the words of the uh, first female vice president here in the US um, as a woman. And uh, regarding the finance, we have a panel on Wednesday on how to access finance. Uh, so I also encourage uh, the attendees to, to, to watch it. And again, thank you so much. Thank you for all the work that you're doing and paving the way and being a role model for, for the future generations. Um, thank you so much, Samita. Thank you for oh, being with us in this fireside chat. <laughs>